Hi, my name is Jennifer uh, Gallardi. I teach at Milpitas Adult School, and I would like to talk about some citizenship resources online. Um, this was our year that we had planned out. We had National Census Day, income tax was coming up, all sorts of things were going to happen politically. So I'm calling this timeline before COVID-19. Now this is caught timeline after COVID-19. In mid-March, we got all our shelter in place um, uh, orders. Um, sent, uh, so our classes started migrating online and it, a lot of people were not prepared. It was a real shock to the system. A lot of things have been delayed, including income tax, which is set in stone. In fact, we think of it as a, um, it's a question on the, the uh, for citizenship. Uh, delayed is the pilot program for the USCIS uh, 100 questions. Uh, the pilot program was supposed to start in April. It's been uh, delayed because USCIS is currently uh, in their own shelter in place uh, uh, orders. Um, the, the census follow up has been delayed and um, also um, we're coming up against, on the other hand, we're coming up against some really hard deadlines. We're having the California Real ID is coming into play on October the 1st. We're having the presidential election on the 3rd and the census will be delivered December the 1st, which talks about apportionment. And later on, I am going to refer to apportionment. Uh, I don't know how you felt when you saw this red banner across USCIS.gov. I was absolutely sick to my stomach. Uh, they temporarily, they initially closed, uh, or excuse me, initially announced that they were going to close some local USCIS offices, but then the order came down that they're going to call, close all the uh, public, uh, public services uh, because they wanted to protect their own workforce and they wanted to protect the people that they serve. So USCIS made that very brave decision to um, shelter in place. However, that left a lot of our students in a lurch because they were ready to go to their citizenship, um, citizenship interviews and their um, oath their uh, oath ceremonies. So those have automatically been delayed and we're waiting for letters to call us back for their appointments. USCIS simp uh, just posted a video uh, maybe about two or three days ago about the benefits of filing online. So USCIS is still doing case management, only they are doing it, uh, they're not doing it to with the public they're doing uh, things uh, in their own offices they have some videos in Spanish and in English about how to create a USCIS online account and they still have their very very fine USCIS civics playlist too so even though the offices are shut to the public USCIS is still on the job and one of the really great things to show that USCIS is still on the job is Gonzales Adult School was originally going to have one of the USCIS officers come into their classroom to do a presentation about becoming a US citizen. Well, instead, they're actually going to be broadcasting this on Facebook. I believe it's tomorrow. So join them live and then they will be locking that uh, interview so if you could go to the Gonzales Adult School Facebook page, check out their services, how they're basically running their citizenship program during this time and their adult education programs, um, that would be really great. So good job, adult, uh, Gonzales Adult School. I'm gonna talk a little bit about my US, my citizenship class. Um, my students, um, I created this website, uscitizenpod.com for my students, um, maybe in 2007 with the podcast and some videos. Um, since then, I've been posting every day and I have over 4,000 blog posts about um, how, uh, preparing for citizenship or I have things related to civics. Um, so, but during this time, we, our last day that we taught in Milpitas, I believe, was, let's see, 
I think it was March the 13th. So our classes meet for six hours a week, a three hour session each time. So it would be uh, Tuesday and Thursday nights. All of a sudden, we no longer had access to each other personally. So what I tried to do is post full blown citizenship lessons on my website. And it's one thing to meet in class in person. It's a totally a different experience of meeting, uh, going to online uh, uh, website and trying to figure out what do I do next. So I've tried to be very specific online, talking about do this and then do that and do that. However, there's still some confusion. So I've been basically posting videos that summarize what people should be doing or studying during that day. So here's an example of vi a video. And I'm going to give a very short um, overview of what I do during the video. And I wanted to check what's in the question and answer. Um, yeah, <clears throat> one question. Do you know how long oath ceremonies and interviews will be delayed? I think you answered no. that, but if you could. Well, okay, They're, the offices are, are closed till May, currently closed till May the 3rd. So they're supposed to open again May the 4th. However, Washington DC and Virginia went into lockdown much later than California. So there's still no information yet about when this offices will be, um, will be reopened. So, so that, would you that's recommend really would you recommend that people just watch the websites to find out or Absolutely. how do they get the information? Okay. Absolutely. Watch the websites and anytime I, I constantly am checking that website myself. Whenever I see a alert like that, I immediately post something to my blog and to also to my YouTube channel, YouTube channel. Um, I do want to say that USCIS is very, very good when it comes to, um, an online social media presence. So use this opportunity to subscribe to their Twitter feed, also their Facebook page and Instagram page. But for my money, the Twitter feed is the best and they have that in English and in Spanish. And they also send out summary, um, um, you, sorry, summary email um, every day about what they posted. So that's another good way to stay on top of that kind of uh, information. Because if you're depending on somebody else for your news, you're that much further removed for your news. So doing direct contact to USCIS through uh, social media is really going to be helpful. And it also gets pe used, people used to uh, accessing uh, the government as a direct resource. For example, people were spreading the news that a rumor that irs was going to delay the taxes but they had said it was going to be much later but when i went to check the irs website there was no news about that and eventually it did come out and they had a um uh, the uh, deadline was in uh, july the 15th so it's better to go and take a look directly at, at the um, government websites for that kind of critical information. Please confirm that that information is up there. So when I am posting my videos and my resources, I'm using um, PDFs from my mix and match uh, citizenship interviews, which are about 20 uh, leveled interviews um, and uh, 40 quizzes. I have the translation in Spanish, and I'm also getting information from preparing the oath transcripts. Now, preparing the oath is really great because they have one video for each one of the 100 questions. However, they use it in flash, and a lot of our students live and die by their cell phones, so they can't access the website on their cell phones. So what I've been doing is going in and um, I took the transcripts and I made P PDFs of the questions or the civic content of the day. And I was developing uh, citizenship um, videos from that in material. Uh, so let's continue. So this is a, a video that I, this is a typical lesson. 
I'm saying that we're going to take a look at a specific lesson, uh, B5, and I do a direct link just to that page. I'm not doing it to the entire PDF of 64 pages. It's a, uh, a direct link to that specific page. There's the Spanish, Spanish translation. There's the transcripts from si.edu from in English and in Spanish. I also um, do less uh, direct links to the USCIS lesson plans. And the USCIS lesson plans, I'm not referring to them in my videos right now. However, when I do a series of videos, the next series of videos, I will be using that material. I also have integration uh, quizzes where I'm matching 10 questions from the uh, from the N400 and 10 questions from the civic content and I always have some extra credit. One of the examples of the extra credit is the uh, videos from Listen and Read Along. So they're taking um, VOA news content and they basically put up the transcript and as the word is spoken, the word is highlighted. So it's really good to help reading and listening fluency. So the American History Series was originally published, I think maybe in 2010, as part of a radio program. They've put this up, and so the sound quality isn't that great on this. However, they've reposted this on VOA Learning English not these videos that highlight the the um the words but they've reposted them with better audio quality and with some really nice reading articles which you can basically use to create um more level appropriate content so please take a look at this this information here so here we are back at AmericanHistory.si.edu uh, citizenship. Again, they have one video for each one of the 100 questions. They put them together in uh, themes. Up here, I want to talk about a little bit more about the what they have available. They have lessons plans available for the teachers. They have word lists, so they basically have a um, a word list not uh, uh, exactly of not only civic content but also ESL content or supporting language content and um, that's those kind of um, those kind of uh, dictionaries or glossary is very helpful for the students and they have the transcripts so for every one of the civics videos they have a transcript that will go along with it so what I've been doing is taking the video, uh, the, the transcripts and slicing them up into smaller piece, pieces for each one of the lessons. Another thing that I want to point out to the teacher on the teacher is um, they have uh, very early in the page, they have something that talks about the list of links. So you cannot download these videos. However, they have a list of the direct links to the videos. Again, when the student accesses it, accesses it through a video link, they're going to be asked if they can use or they can accept flash content. So that is one. So if they're if you're on Canvas or if you're using Google Classroom, you can pull out those direct links and put that, embed that into your classroom or your learning management systems. And that's going to be really helpful. Jennifer, yes. I'm sorry, we have a quick question. The slide yeah. before that one, actually now two slides back. Okay, let me go back. Okay, please. The one before, right there. There yeah. we go. So someone is asking um, the website for this previous slide. So this is the one. So this one is on uscitizenpod.com. I posted it on March the 27th. This one here, if you're talking about the video, which is a really cool video, this is on YouTube and it's the, the, um, the channel is called Listen and Read Along. Really good playlist uh, about hi uh, history. So take a look at their take a look at their playlist, and you'll be able to find the American History series. 
Also, go, go ahead and uh, that's a, a link I should have posted. I'm sorry, I don't have it in my presentation, but I will add it a little bit later. Voice of America has um, more modern um, editing of the content, and I will post that uh, when I uh, put this up on uh, OTAN's website, okay? Okay, so here's an example of the civics transcripts. I've uh, tried to put short links with this. Um, the short links um, have been changing because I wanted to get something consistent. But for instance, when I had the English one, I said, okay, this is 10 dash US citizen, and this one's 10 dash Spanish citizen. I realized that was kind of like, hey, that's not appropriate. We wanna focus on English, language versus Spanish language, not U.S. citizen versus, we're both U.S. citizens. So um, I hope, I, I did do the Spanish translation mostly through Google Translate and I'm able to read enough Spanish to see if it's appropriate or not. I would love to do the same thing in English, i sorry, in Vietnamese and Chinese. However, I have not been, the, the translation that comes out is not satisfactory according to my students. Um, if somebody else would like to take that on and do it for Spanish and Chinese and Korean, I think that would be really wonderful. Here's an example of some of the civics content. So we reviewed the civics content. Now I'm using the, the, um, the text from, a, the, um, from a preparing the oath. They have the questions always on the top. I have a picture and I have the, the content from, the, uh, from the, the PDF. And then I always try, try to put my sources. Now, when you're looking at the video on preparing the oath, they have some wonderful, wonderful graphics. There's movement. This is kind of static, but this is the best that I can do. Hopefully my video skills will get a little bit better as they go on. I always um, have uh, something from the citizenship interview. So here's an example of a, uh, one of the, um, the citizenship questions. So all week they've been reviewing the citizenship interview. They've been gaining more vocabulary. On Friday, I deliver a quiz where they're, have, they're being asked about uh, information uh, appropriate to the citizenship interview. And initially, the first week I didn't, I wasn't giving people homework. I was assuming that they would be going to the website. I go, Hmm, you know, I think I need to be more explicit in my, um, in my uh, instructions. So what I've been doing is trying to add more things, more explicit instruction to my videos. So I've been saying, look, don't forget about your reading and writing. I do a summary of where people can access the resources. I always give them extra credit because I won't, I, the best way to prepare for the interview is actually to speak English with, an, uh, with another person. So yes, I assume that they're practicing the citizenship interview, but I also want them to dis, uh, discuss um, uh, more content. So for instance, who is the father or mother of your country? So looking at those kind of, uh, thinking about those kind of questions and doing a compare and contrast is gonna be appropriate. I summarize the videos, uh, 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 extra credit videos that they could be looking at. And I also wanted to show you this one um, series of VOA Learning English. It's America's President's Playlist. And so these videos are one minute summary of each one of the presidents. They go really fast, but they're really good at delivering content. And I'll show how I use those in a little bit. Finally, I, you know, I don't know, maybe I, this is how I'm ending my videos. I take something random from my house that's appropriate or maybe I referred to during our presentations. Um, I love to do puzzles, so I have a lot of civics puzzles, usually a cup of coffee. Something to share from my own home because I'm in my own home um, making these videos and I, uh, some of the students say, hey, we really like this because we, we're getting a glimpse into people's lives. You could also use something like this 
for a warm up. So for instance, if you started your Zoom session, you may share a, a picture like this and you say, okay, well, let's try to remember what the questions are. So for instance, this one's easy. Who was the first president? But then you see this one, this is Jefferson. Well, what was the question about Jefferson? Um, who wrote the Declaration of Independence? You may talk about the 50 stars, all sorts of questions. So I've had students, uh, when I've run my Zoom sessions, they've annotated this, they've spoken uh, their answer, all sorts of things. So um, you could basically use this as a summary or you can use it as a warm up for your for your classes. And I like to drink coffee, so everybody has a uh, coffee mug from Washington, DC. And I always end my videos with stay home, stay healthy, stay strong. I know you will be a great American citizen. So um, giving them affirmation, so acknowledging that we're all in this together and that we need to stay strong for each other, I think is very appropriate. So I take those videos and I put, it them, put them into a playlist and I've done another, um, so there's a series of 10 lessons right now. I also uh, put in a video, I originally made this for my ESL students about what's an what's a activity you can do in your house. You're not studying citizenship, but you're basically creating more content to re, uh, more uh, content to remember what you're supposed to be learning. So here I was talking about jigsaw puzzles and there's a lot of free online jigsaw puzzles. And then I show off a couple of ones that I've done too. So making things fun and sharing things from people's personal experience is going to be really helpful. I want to talk about more civics and ESL resources. Uh, before I continue, are there any questions? Yes, there is. <laughs> How are your students responding to the DL, the distance learning format, in terms of attendance and interest? Okay, that's a really, really good, uh, good question. Uh, we do try to have uh, Zoom meetings on the, the times uh, for our classes. However, my class started at 545. People are eating at 545. So we've been meeting at seven o'clock and usually meet for about an hour. However, the thing is, is that what they find the most satisfying is personal phone calls or Zoom meetings or FaceTime meetings. The reason why is that it's one thing to receive civics content in a group, but the whole point of citizenship is practicing uh, practicing your your interview skills together so they get a little bit of that when they when I do breakout rooms however invariably somebody forgets their citizenship interview or what they're supposed to be talking about so when I check in on them they're not speaking English and they're not talking about citizenship so um, I really think that uh, I know a lot of teachers are still doing it the personal touch um, but I wanted to show one uh, group that is uh, doing their entire class online. So uh, I know some students, uh, especially in the um, San Diego has a really good uh, series of citizenship classes. Um, they're very practiced on using Canvas. So contacting the citizenship and ESL um, in their uh, in the non-credit program of the San Diego uh, community colleges would be really helpful um, because they're really good at doing with campus and citizenship there. Um, I know there is a Moodle course um, on the OTAN's website for citizenship. I think that is a, a little bit outdated, but it could be good. Uh, I personally like, I've always done the on, um, the delivering content by my daily blog, that's really good. And I'm not familiar with anybody who's doing it on Google Classroom, so. Um, and I know that there's several teachers that do use Edmodo to deliver content. Is there another question? Yes. What yes. would you recommend for a class that used to meet Tuesday and Thursdays for two and a half hours weekly? All my students only have phone, low digital literacy skills. Okay. And most do not have emails. Okay. I would initially contact them through Facebook if they if they have 
uh, FaceTime because doing things on the phone and doing it, nobody, people rarely do. Um, well, I, I take that back. I know I had job interviews on the phone, but people really need, especially low literacy, need facial clues to respond. And plus, people are glad to see you. Okay, they really are. So I would initially use FaceTime to co contact my students, and I would ask them to, to commit to maybe a 10 to 15 minute uh, session once a week because you're gonna get some real intensive work and then they can, you can give them practice outside of that classroom. But that one-on-one -on -one contact is gonna be really appropriate. And that's been more helpful. That's what my lower level students have really appreciated. Now I'm gonna show you another uh, class that has been doing things on face, uh, Facebook and that's gonna be really helpful too. Um, also, we tried WeChat uh, with my Chinese students they had a great time, but there was, I couldn't understand really what was happening because there was too much back and forth in the original language. So we had to, I had to be in a session where there was a little bit more control. Um, is there another question? And is that a satisfactory answer? I think you got it. We do have a couple of suggestions from some folks um, that their students use WhatsApp and you can mm -hmm. make video calls using that too. WhatsApp is very good, yes. Okay. Um, if you need to stay on track with ideas about civics content, and especially if you're trying to deliver um, information them, to them daily, or if you're trying to fill out a uh, Canvas course, take a look at the uh, civics calendar from the National Constitution Center. They basically talk about, they celebrate the different amendments, and the big theme this year is women uh, and the right to vote. So that's going to be very appropriate as we're coming up on the presidential election. ESL library is a wonderful system. Um, they have a lot of other uh, lessons that you can share online with, um, with multiple le level students. Um, one of the best or one of the best things that VOA, Voice of America News, has done is that they have a special uh, section about press freedom. So they basically uh, take a look at what's going on in different countries and even the United States of what's happening with press freedom, which is very appropriate, especially during the presidential elections and talking about various news sources. VOA Learning English did a series on news literacy. So this is again a way to fill out your your Canvas um, your Canvas courses and other uh, or getting access to daily information for your students because news literacy is critical, especially learning about health, what's appropriate to do and what's not appropriate to do, uh, learning about what's happening with the presidential elections, etc. Um, we're still in, even though the census, a, April 1st has passed, there's still people who have not filled out the census. And some people, I don't know what's happening with the, what's happening with EL Civics, but um, uh, Division of Adult uh, uh, Career Education from Los Angeles still maintains a really, really great resources about the census 2020 resources. And a lot of them, uh, take a look at government um, information. So taking a look at those and thinking about how can I use this to teach my students more about the inner workings of the government is going to be really helpful. Plus, we got it now more than ever. We need to make sure that those uh, those res or that we fill out the census. iCivics. So a lot of people are home, but they love to play games. So iCivics is a um, is a program from, um, I think it was, who's the first um, woman Supreme Court? Sandra Day O'Connor. Basically, they've developed a whole series of civics courses or uh, civics games teaching people about voting rights or news literacy or um, getting access to legal, uh, legal uh, counsel. Um, it's very, very helpful. Now, 
this is going to be more appropriate for your higher level students. However, sometimes I get my higher level students to play these games and then they come back and report to the students what they did, what they learned during the games. So they make their own little presentations and say, look, I learned this and that and the other thing. So taking a look at iCivics.org and especially taking a look at their blogs because they develop games and they have activities according to different monthly themes. So uh, speaking of news resources, Newzilla has basically uh, announced that a lot of their free con uh, their content is free. Uh, there was a debate between my coworkers whether or not you can uh, you can create classes on Newzilla. But again, this is a good way to get our students to learn how to access good critical content for um, uh, that they need. Elizabeth Clare has also basically released free uh, their issues free on the internet. So please take a look at Elizabeth Clare Easy English. Change Agent from the New England Literacy Resource Center is really great. And New Readers Press, again, has some really great content. I want to go back to Elizabeth Clare. She's reading her, her, um, her feature stories and putting them on YouTube, on her um, YouTube um, channel. So that's a really good way to get our, the students to dig a little bit deeper into the news and learn more information about what's going on in um, that's related to civics. I know this is not specifically citizenship stuff. However, we speak New York, uh, we speak NYC is a great series that was, came out in 2009 and then was re-upped in 2018. And it's, a, it's focused in on low literacy uh, students and they go through different ways to learn about money, to learn about online life, to learn about workers' rights. So they have a lot of great uh, supporting PDFs. So taking a look at these resources and uh, their high interest stories and they're really, really great. So again, this is another way to basically pursue um, uh, uh, appropriate content or uh, that's tangential to citizenship uh, resources. Of course, we have USA Learns and you can put your classes on here. You can create classes. You need to go to the teacher link down here. Um, and you have the citizenship content up here. The course is divided into four sections. There's one about legal resources. There's the part about um, uh, the N400. There's a section in there about citizen, uh, the civics questions. And then there's another uh, section in there about, um, let me see, about what happens after the interview. One problem with USA Learn citizenship, there is so much content. The students can really get way down. So you really need to keep on top of them, especially at the very beginning of the, of the course, because there's a lot of legal content on there and they're just like, hey, I just want to learn about the N400 or I want to learn about civics. So making sure that they get over that hump and into the more interesting speaking and listening uh, sections where they're talking about, oh, I just have a little bit of an arrest, okay? Not too much of an arrest. Or I had a very interesting love life, okay? And the, the complications that comes from filling out your N-400 application from that, making sure that they continue on and get through that is really important. I see that there's two questions. Do you? There are, yes. Um, let's start with the USA Learns one first. Uh, do you know how long the USA Learns citizenship course takes? I would say the at the very, at the lowest end, 30 hours, at the highest end, 60 hours. So it, 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 it could be very appropriate for somebody who needs to do distance learning. However, you, you do have speaking practice in there. So that's really, really good. And you have listening content practice and you can go back and review some information. However, I still think that you need to make sure that you're checking in with the teacher at least once a week and practice what they should be 
uh, what they sh they just learned. So basically setting a goal like you need to get through this amount of work, you need to do these assignments, and then creating your own oral check with your students. So maybe you're, you're talking to them 10 or 15 minutes a week. Make sure you basically touch on some of the stuff that they learned. I think that would be the best way to learn USA Learns. So just throwing anybody on the computer is a recipe for disaster, okay? It's much better to basically get, make sure that they they're, have some teacher supervision and basically that they know that there's other students doing this as well. So if they have a question, they don't always have to contact the teacher. Maybe they can contact one of their friends and practice some of that information on there. And getting this, the students to report back on that would be really good. I believe Gonzalez Adult School is using this and it, perhaps you can uh, connect, connect with the, the teachers to talk to them about that later. Is there another question? Do you use Remind? Does anybody use Remind? Um, low level. Yeah, um, I I initially used Remind for my low level students, and they were not responding to the the messages unless I translated them, and a lot of them missed them simply because they didn't know that they were supposed to be they were supposed to basically opt in, so. If you're in a classroom and you put every you teach everybody how to get on to remind when they're in the classroom, that's the best way. Trying to get them on remind outside the classroom is really, really difficult. The best way is um, I've used uh, what's up, what WhatsApp, yeah, or Facebook. And that's because they're already on there. So going to where your students already are is really the best way to, to get that stuff happening. And there's a, um, a comment. I'm going to um, address this. It looks like teachers can keep track of the amount of hours students spend in this program if teachers create a classroom in U.S. Lady Learns and then they invite their students. Yes, they can to yeah. an extent. And we're going to be doing a USA Learns webinar in the future. So look for that on the OTAN website and you'll get more information there. Jennifer, which online resource is best for students to practice part 12 questions from the N-400 citizenship application? Um, I would say USA Learns, but I have a lot of content myself on uh, part 12 stuff too. So um, yeah. And we also have a request about, I'm going to save this to the end. If we have time, Jennifer can address how she uses Facebook, but let's let her continue with the, the presentation. Okay, I'm we'll going to come go back, back to that. I'm going to go back to part 12, okay? Okay, sure. So, part, so as with the mix and match citizenship interviews, as I continue through the series, I basically stop asking so many personal questions and start asking more part 12 questions about the vocabulary. That series is going to be finished probably next week. So the, nec the week after that, I'm going to be going through my 30... 30, um, I, so I have an N400 um, PDF, and it's basically, I cut that into 30 different pieces. So predominantly, my focus is on the part 12 stuff. So I take like almost every one of the part 12 questions, and I associate it with some sort of um, graphic, and then I have a definition on that. That's probably going to be the very best practice that I've seen. I've seen some really, really super great practice um, on Quizlet. That is probably the best way to practice part 12 specific information. And then quiz, Q -U -I, quizzes, Q-U-I-Z-Z, I-Z or something like that. Those are again, really good. But again, f coming up with the different scenarios and I think that's what USA Learns is really good that enables people to practice that information. And I think as adult education teachers, we have to think about ourselves. How can we come up with different uh, scenarios or stories? Because our students love stories about how to employ some of that, that part 12 information would be really helpful. So um, anyway, I'm gonna continue. And I wanna talk a little bit about using videos. So here's a really um, 
This is BPSOS um, West from Westminster, and they're basically um, doing all their classes on Facebook. Or, yeah, most I've mostly seen them on Facebook. They're recording them, and so you can do it through Facebook Live, and then they're posting them to their website. So this website, so their this YouTube channel, excuse me. This YouTube channel is about two or three weeks old, okay? So this is very fresh content, and what's really helpful is that there is a teacher there who, um, who basically when she teaches, she teaches, she th says things in English, and then she'll say them again in Vietnamese. Um, you have, uh, so we, so you have some really good teachers there who, are sharing their information and some of their citizenship resources. Um, so taking a look and talking to them about how they're doing their, their uh, classes on Facebook and, and on Zoom, and then basically posting their, their classes is gonna be really, really helpful. Please go ahead and take a look at their YouTube channel and then also their channel on Facebook. Um, one of the things that I really like to use uh, VOA, um, um, VOA news uh, videos to talk about different aspects of uh, civics. Here's uh, information about a woman who's basically joined the military so she can basically become a U.S. citizen. So what I basically did initially in 2018, I would take a video like this. I would embed it in my blog, and then I would also be um, asking um, a couple citizenship questions. So something very, very basic. But you can do better. You can take short videos. So for instance, I took a whole bunch of videos from the census, and I embedded them in Google Forms. I also found a really good, uh, so uh, when you embed them in Google, Google Forms, they play for about 30 seconds or one minute, however long you would like, and then the student can basically respond and you get their, you get their results. I found another uh, interesting um, citizenship uh, site that I'm gonna be interested in uh, taking videos from them. It's called um, George Washington's Mount Vernon, and he has some, they have longer lectures there from some of their, um, from some of their professors, but they also have very short minute videos about uh, different aspects of George Washington's life. So I thought, hey, those would be really great for the students to simply watch those for about a minute and answer some questions. So starting to, I'm starting to look around for those kind of mini videos that could be really help illustrate what's happening with citizenship. Um, I also have used uh, Ed Puzzles, and so I took the series from VOA Learning English uh, Presidents, and basically the, the video will stop, or it will play, and then stop at the appropriate uh, place and prompt the student for a citizenship question. However, in this, this minute video, I asked about 10 questions, and that is really inappropriate. So it's kind of like, you just said a sentence and now I have to answer the question. So what would be more helpful if you have a very, very short video, about a minute, maybe ask like two or three questions at the max. And, but this is helpful again, because the student, you're checking for understanding with the student and this is helpful. You can also use this with um, Pear Deck and Nearpod and all these have really great, um, uh, professional development websites that you can learn more about their apps. So you can take content that you already have, whether it's videos or PowerPoints, and you can import it into these, uh, into these apps to basically create something more interactive and to use it for assessments. There's a couple of questions, yeah. Um, and we're gonna save the Facebook for later. Is family involvement good while you are teaching? How do you include or exclude family involvement while you are teaching online? Distractions, kids help or help too much? Well, a lot of, so one of the ways, you know, it's always good to use sugar instead of a stick. And one of the things is that I always acknowledge the kids that pop their heads into the, the face. And sometimes they actually are, they sit down and they'll sit with their parents during that. 
another way is that's one of the reasons why I posted the um, the uh, the video of doing puzzles together because puzzles are a really good family activity. Um, I'm going to be posting more videos about family friendly activities related to citizenship. So I would say that uh, family uh, that kids are welcome be uh, because a lot of people are doing citizenship so they can provide for a more secure future for their family. A lot of people came here so they can get a better opportunity for their family. So it's really super important to acknowledge the kids. Oh, I forgot one very, very important app that I did not put in this, um, this uh, presentation. It's called Get Epic, G-E-T-E-P-I-C.com. And what it is is an online digital library for kids. So you can create playlists or basically reading lists about um, for different levels on different civics or citizenship topics. So there are online kids books about going to an oath ceremony. There are online kids books about geography. There are online kids books about the presidents. So creating those kind of reading lists and then sharing them with your, your, with your, with your adults so the kids could be something similar to what the parents are learning about is going to be really, really super helpful. So again, I can't recommend getepic.com enough. And is that helpful? Yes. Uh, for those taking Spanish, only interview. What can instructors give to students to practice their N400 apart okay. from the paper? So there is, so I do have the mix and match citizenship interview. Um, those are in, that, that is in Spanish. I do have a copy of a translation of the N400 in Spanish. And um, I was talking about the 30 interviews based on the N400. Those are currently being translated into Spanish now. And I hope to have those really soon. So if the person could leave their name so I, they could get a preview of, the, of those, um, uh, those interviews, that would be really helpful so I can get some feedback on if the Spanish is good or not. Because during the, especially the N400 part, there's going to be information in there about N400 vocabulary for the part 12 section. I want to know if those, those are appropriate translations of my definitions. So if that person could, um, if people are interested in the Spanish section, I would really appreciate that kind of feedback. We, we got her. Okay, great. Anybody, uh, what's the next question? Um, well, it's uh, asking you to talk more about how you use Facebook. And if you want to table this until the end, it's up to you. I'm, I personally don't use Facebook. I use um, FaceTime or I chat with my students on Facebook uh, because they already have Facebook. I have not conducted classes on Facebook. The people who do conduct, conduct classes on Facebook are, are BPSOS Westminster. And uh, I know that Gonzales um, Adult School has a presence on, a, uh, on Facebook. They're not doing it, their class on there, but they're probably one of the better schools that really has leveraged Facebook to get information out to their students. I know there's a, a couple uh, schools back east who also are doing the same thing. Um, if the person could say what kind of context or what they were thinking about doing with Facebook, that would be helpful. And what other questions are there? Actually, some comments. Um, we have Gail Hall, who said she mm -hmm. had a student, not lower level, who decided mm -hmm. to have her interview in Spanish, although that wasn't necessary. She didn't pass the 100 questions because we had practiced them in English. She had her second interview in English and passed with flying colors. That's really interesting. Thank you for sharing that. So this is, this is an old video about how, how we use census information to assign represent, representation to different, to different uh, states. I cannot think of a drier, more geeky subject, okay? And if you, even saying this, even saying that sentence, one, I wanted to go to sleep. However, 
what can you do to get this information out? I would say create a transcript and then do a close exercise. So I'm going to add, talk about how you can create a transcript. What do you do? This is the video. Down here, there's the three little dots, dot, dot, dot. It's basically steps towards getting more information. You click, you do a right click, you open the transcript. And so here you're seeing the transcript. You can toggle, if you see the dot, dot, dot up here, the snowman, you can toggle it and get rid of all the timestamps. Now you simply basically copy this. So, so you just scroll down you, and you highlight it and you copy it and you put it into, uh, to put it into a, um, a uh, word, a word or uh, a note file or whatever the case may be. And you can basically fix the, fix the uh, transcript uh, the way it, uh, way it should be. Um, you can make sure that the, trans, the transcripts you're getting is English or there's the automatic English version. Um, that some, the English version has been cleaned up. So there's the periods in the right places. If you have the automatic or uh, automatic captions, they're not going to have all the punctuation in there. Um, it's been really interesting that I used to give that to my um, higher level students and they would basically test their grammar by cleaning up this, the information. But this is a way to take snippets of probably the more difficult parts of uh, some of these very important videos and basically giving, allowing them to have a transcript, perhaps even translating the transcript via Google um, uh, Google Translate or whatever the case may be, you can turn it into lesson, uh, listening lessons, you can turn it into um, basically Google Forms. So learning how to get that transcript, getting that information and basically using and manipulating that information for our students to make it more level appropriate is really going to help that level play, play, playing field that will eventually guarantee success for our students. I can uh, share some more resources online, but does anybody else have any questions? You have tools that target the N400 interview questions, such as focus on voca vocabulary. Also, how do you practice with students in the event the interviewer asks a student what a term means following a response to a previous question? Okay, so a lot of times I address that on um, some of my YouTube, um, uh, my YouTube videos. So if you go to take a look at some of the YouTube videos that I have. So one of the things that I've been finding is that some people have been sharing, um, what do I want to say, uh, content. So they're showing their textbooks and I don't know if that's appropriate or not uh, because a lot of that, let's see, go to share screen now. Um, because a lot of that is our copyrighted. So that could, that could pose some problems for people. This is my website. And let me bring it down a little bit. Do you see the website that I'm, do you see my website? Yes. Okay, great. So this is again, the mix and match citizenship interviews. And so when you click this one, this is a, the, a whole bunch of, uh, uh, interviews that I put together that are basically leveling up. So especially down here, there's going to be more uh, practice for the part 12. And as you continue along in the series of interviews, you're going to get further, uh, further information about practicing the part 12 information. And again, probably if you want to see some flashcards about that, check, take a look at what's going on or do a search for them on um, um, Quizlet. This one was what I was talking about of the 30 interviews. And this is being translated into Spanish right now. So here we're going on to maybe um, uh, talking about acts of violence. So we have, uh, we have, pictures, but then we have the, the, uh, the definitions about this. So some people are use, are, have created videos about this, 
but if this can be also printed out or shared uh, interview interview by inter excuse me page by page so today we're going to uh, practice question 14 and tomorrow we're going to practice question 15 and then we're going to go on to the whole section about the prison and detention center so i know it's a lot to put up the entire pdf at once so what i've done if you go to the n400 pdfs Here, you're going to have a whole bunch of different levels of PDFs. And on the bottom, here we have the 30 section practice interviews. And you can basically click on the individual ones and share them with, uh, with your students. So these are the, the, these are the um, interviews that are being uh, translated right now. Yeah. We have a question, Jennifer. If we post one of your videos of a practice interview, in the Google Classroom or on a Google site, is that okay? And uh, what, what you need to do is simply get the link. Do you want me to show you how no, to no, get- No, 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 no. She knows how to do that. She's just asking if it's okay. If she gives you credit, this was created by Jennifer from Milpitas, is that okay? Can she use the video on her site or her classroom? I don't see what the problem is, but the- She's the asking for permission. She's asking for permission. Say yes or no. <laughs> <laughs> No? <laughs> yes? The reason, the reason why, okay. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna say yes, okay, because okay. this is extraordinary times, okay? The, the only thing is, is that when, if you basically download it and then upload it to your site, instead of using the link, I don't get credit for that. So when you embed the link into your Google Classroom, I get credit for it, okay? So use the embed code. It's better to use the embed code or use the, the link. However, right now it's much more important because there's security issues and people are still working out the whole online activity, the whole online line sharing of resources. That's more important to me personally right now than me getting credit from YouTube. The only problem is, is that I know that people are also sharing the videos um, for sale on, in China and Vietnam, and that I don't like. So um, I'm glad people are making money, but I think it's an inappropriate, um, it's theft of material. Exactly. So yeah, sure. just to reiterate, if, um, if they go to your site and use your site, no problem, because you're no going problem. to be getting the credit that way or the, the link hits is what yeah. we're looking for. Or if they hit the embed code, if they get the embed code from the video, that rocks, that's good too. No problem. However, I acknowledge that there are some people that have so much security on their, um, on the different um, school districts mm -hmm. that sometimes they have to download, uh, download that video and upload it to their Google, to their own Google site. I acknowledge that. And like I said, it's extraordinary times. So if, if that is the case, I'm just going to jump in yeah. here real quick. Uh, mm -hmm. If that is the case, they can email OTAN, support mm -hmm. at OTAN.us, ask for the Google person. And we have a workaround on that. Mm -hmm. So contact us and we, we, can, we can help you out. Jennifer, is your website a Google site? Yes, it's, a, it's um, actually it's Blogger, which was purchased by Google. Okay, only students taking the English civics test get asked vocab questions, question mark. No, I don't think so. I mean, I've known my Spanish students who have asked, been asked, you know, define something in Spanish, so. I don't see how they could possibly not ask that. But then again, people, they don't, it's not a vocabulary test, it's an interview. They're only asking the questions to make sure that the person understands what they're agreeing to legally, okay? So maybe they'll get one or two questions just so the interviewer can be assured that the person knows what they're agreeing to because this is a legal, they're undertaking legal obligations here, so. Don't frighten them about the vocabulary, simply prepare them. And I'm interested in some kind of glossary of terms, Spanish, for instructions on how to explain online learning to students to get them started with Zoom, Google Classroom, Ooh. et cetera. I would love that. I'm sorry, I don't So know. it looks like you're interested in it too. <laughs> 
Yeah. Okay. I've been interest. I've been interested to see. I mean, how effective have people have? So my default um, is basically I run things through Google Translate and then I check check the translation. But I'm not a native speaker. Have people been able to do that with some online instruction, and has it been successful? Have people been able to do that with Vietnamese? And Brandon, I, I, I open that question to you. Um, I've posted your website, Jennifer. It's uh, https colon slash slash uscitizenpod.com. Okay. And uh, when I share this, um, when I share the um, slides for this, I'm going to add uh, get epic and the further information from VOA Learning English about um, the updated um, history content. 